Praise Church and Campus Ministry. We greet you all, and this is a time where we come together and pray. Who believes in the power of prayer? How many times has prayer helped you through the challenging things? When you didn't know where your meal was going to come from or where the check was going to come from. But when you called on the name Jesus, he showed up right on time. When you just said, Lord, help, he showed right up on time. So don't be afraid to pray out loud. Don't be afraid to cry out if you need to cry out. There's some burdens that somebody may have came in here with, but there you can lay it at his feet. You can lay it on this altar. You can lay it wherever you need to do it so that God can have his way. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, we once again just thank you. We thank you because we know each day, Lord, is not promised. We thank you for even just being able to get here. Lord, just to be with one another, Lord, just so we can praise your name one more time. God, we thank you for the mobility of our limbs, Lord. And even with that, Lord, we thank you just for the breath in our body, God. Hallelujah. We thank you that we even have a place to worship, God. Because, Lord, we know that you always make a way. And, Lord, you're continuing to make a way in this place. But, God, once again, we don't forget what you have done for us, Lord. You died just so we can live, just so we can be right here, just to praise your name one more time. Lord, you died so we can once again have a community that loves one another, Lord. God, a community that, Lord, we need that we can help one another to love thy neighbor like you already have. Lord, you died so we can once again be just like you and that we'd have another chance because we know that we fail all the time. Lord, continue just to forgive us for our sins. Because, Lord, we know we're not perfect. And that's, with that, Lord, you die for us just knowing that we're not perfect. But, God, you still call us your greatest creations. And, so, Lord, we thank you once again. We just thank you. Hallelujah. So, Jesus, once again, we don't forget what you've done, not just for us, but for the people that you've been doing, Lord, for all the miracles, for all the signs, for all the wonders. And Jesus, we thank you for, once again, your sacrifice. As Lord, we know even with that, we know that we can too, can suffer well. That Lord, that we can, that we don't have to give up, Lord. That despite the world being against us, hallelujah. Jesus, you're always by our side. And that there is nothing that we have to worry about. Because, Lord, we know that joy, once again, comes in the morning time. Hallelujah. And Jesus, once again, just continue to help those that are in need. Lord, we want others that even though they're not even in the U.S., Lord, just other countries, Lord. Lord, continue to help with their situations. Lord, we even pray for those that don't know you just yet, Lord. We pray for those who don't believe. God, we pray even just for our enemies, Lord. God, we want everybody to have love, peace, joy. Hallelujah. And Jesus, continue just to once again have your way and spread your wonders and your love. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Hallelujah. God, we're just so grateful to be back in your presence one more time in the fellowship with each other, God, celebrating your resurrection. God, we're just so grateful, Lord, that you decided to die for us. And Lord, that you didn't stay dead, but God, you decided to raise up again. And God, we're just so grateful, Lord. We, we are so glad that you didn't leave us in our sin, but God, you raised us, you picked us back up too. And God, we're just so grateful, Lord. We don't deserve to be picked up every time. We, you could have picked us up one time. You could have rescued us one time. But Lord, you decided to continue to pick us up, that you continue to heal us, that you continue to restore us, that you continue to deliver us. And God, we're just so grateful. Lord, we came out today to bless you. We came out today to praise your name. We came out today to give you the glory that you're worthy of. We came to give you the worship. We came to bestow worth upon you, God. We came to lift up the name of Jesus. So God, we're just so glad that you will receive our praise. We're so glad that you're gonna receive our worship. 
Lord, we're lifting up the people that don't know how to call on your name, the people who don't know what you've done for us, the selfless gift that you've given us. God, you gave us your only begotten son. Lord, so we just want to thank you for that. We just want to lift up your name for that. We want to let the world know about Jesus. We want to make Jesus' name famous. We want to make his blood worth something. It's, it, it's worthy of it all. It cleanses us. It washes us. It makes us white. The white that we wear today is to signify the cleansing that you've given us with your blood. And God, we just thank you for that. Lord, I'm just praying that you would send your spirit in this place, Lord. That you would fill us with your anointing. Fill us with your power, Lord. If you want to heal today, we give you room to do that. If you want to save today, God, we're saying please come in. Please come in and have your way, God. And we will be careful enough to say that it was only Jesus, that it was only by your blood, that it's only by your power that we are saved and that we are redeemed, God. Lord, we pray that you would come in this room, Lord, that you would be in every part of our service, Lord, that you would be in the singing, Lord, that you would be in the word, Lord, that you would be in the fellowship. God, we're praying that you would just please have your way. And God, we just thank you. And we're just thanking you for all that you're doing and all that you're gonna do. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Lord, we give you the highest praise today, hallelujah. You woke us up this morning, Lord, and you started us on our way. We made it here safely because you bestowed upon us traveling mercies, and we thank you that we have this opportunity to come here as a community and worship you as one body, as one spirit, in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Lord, we welcome you in this space. We welcome you in this ballroom. There is no surface area. There is no square footage of this, of this area that you cannot be in. We ask that you dwell everywhere in this space. In all of the rows, and all of the pews, we ask that you dwell in the equipment, in the musician's pit, here in the mics, on the stage, in the camera. We ask that you not just dwell in this space, but you dwell in us as we are in this space. If we are in the way, God, help us to get our attitudes out the way. If we are in the way, God, help us to get our mind right. If we are in the way, God, help us to get our hearts right. If we have pain, God, give us healing so that we can give you praise and not have any excuse not to give your name glory and not to give your name honor and not to give your name any adoration because you are deserving of it. You are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords and you are the mighty God that we serve and you are the God that is above all gods and we thank you that we serve a God that doesn't just lord over us, but we serve a God that serves us every day. God, you serve us every day you wake us up. You serve us every day you keep our hearts beating. You serve us every day we are able to have breath in our bodies. Every day we are able to have the activity of our limbs. Lord, you serve us every day, 24-7. Jesus, you are praying and interceding for us every day, 24-7. Lord, you are serving us, and we thank you that you set the example Help us to emulate the example that you set. Help us to do what it is you do. Help us to say what it is you say. Help the mind that was in Christ Jesus also be in us. Help us to think what you think. Help us to pray about what you prayed about. Help us to pray for the people that you prayed for. And help us to help everyone that you would help. Those that, the, the things we do to the least. You said that we are doing it also unto you. Help us to have a heart for it. Help us to have an eye for it. Help us to have a mind for it. For us to act the way you act and to serve the way you serve. And help us to be grateful for your sacrifice every day. You were bruised for our transgressions and wounded for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. Help us to not take that for granted, Lord. Help us to be grateful. Help us to be grateful for your sacrifice and not put you up on the cross every day. Help us every time we repent to really not go back. Help us every time we don't just say we're sorry and go back to it. Help us to really change our hearts and really change our minds and really change our spirits to really walk in the spirit and to really walk with you. Help us to have the fruit of the spirit and help us to have the virtues mentioned that Peter mentioned. Help everything 
all of those graces, all of those levels of grace. Help us, help us to have them abound in us, not just be in us and it works one day and it doesn't work the next. Help us to, help us to have it abound in us and it works in us more and more each day, more and more each week, more and more each month, more and more each year, and more and more every decade. Help us to grow and to have evidence of our growth and evidence of our faith. And we thank you that when that you are married to the backslider. Know that we are not going to keep backsliding, but we thank you that you are still faithful to us even when we slip up, even when we pour oil on the floor. We thank you for the rebukes and we thank you for you sharpening us. We thank you for you correcting us, whether it be you using a friend, whether it be you using a loved one, whether it be you using a pastor, or you speaking to us yourself. We thank you in each in every way that you correct us and we in each and every way and each and every day that you try to make us more and more like you Jesus so that when we pray to God he sees his son and that our prayers can be answered when he and that when God sees us and when he says well done it'll be because your righteousness was imputed onto us and we and as we walk closer and closer and as we get closer and closer to be like you Jesus that we will experience the abundance that you have for us Lord and we thank you in Jesus name in Jesus name God we give your name all the praise glory and honor we call you El Imana the faithful one Thank you that you have been faithful to each and every one of us, how you have clothed us, God, how you have given us revelations, how you have expounded upon so many things for each and every one of us, that you not have that you haven't laid us begging for bread, but God, that we are able to call on that great name, that we call on Jesus, that we say that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We are so grateful that your glory fills the temple of God that your light is with us that you are our knight in shining armor we are so grateful as we lift up our hands as we lift up our voices as we continue to allow you to come into the room would your spirit continue to comfort those who feel comfortless would your spirit continue to complete whatever needs to be completed on the inside of us God we thank you right now how you're making ways we thank you right now God how you are healing the sick we thank you right now God if we came in here with a double mind how you allow our minds to be made straight we thank you Jesus how power is coming into the house how power is coming into our bodies how power is coming into our minds we thank you in advance for what you're doing we thank you in advance for how you're healing us we thank before we get back home, that the situation is already handled, that we're on the other side of through. We thank you, oh God, that every serpent, every demon, every witch, every warlock has to come subjection under your power. We thank you, God, that they are under our feet right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever we need you to be, whatever we need you to cover, whatever we need to call you for, whatever miracle signs and wonders we need, we thank you, God, that they are still for ours for the asking. That we continue to ask you time and time again that we're not too proud to ask you, Lord, to show up in spaces where we are afraid, to show up in spaces where we don't feel like we have it. We're asking that you will be in us every single day. Every single day that we'll continue to believe. Every single day we'll continue to sing a song of praise. Every single day trust you, that we will continue to obey you, that we will continue to magnify you, that we will continue to put your name on high, that we'll know that we know that we know that we serve a mighty God, that we serve the God that continues to never fail. You don't get weak. You don't be afraid. You are the one that we can depend on in every shape, way, and form. God, you're just so amazing. You are the rose of Sharon. You are beautiful. You are omnipotent. You are God that is with us. You are Emmanuel. You are our King. God, we just give your name all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. If you believe that Jesus rose from the cross, 
This is the time to clap your hands. If you know that he got up from the grave, just like you said he was, this is the time to clap your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 2 through 7, and it reads as such. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is not here. The angel said, he is not here. He is risen from the dead just as he said he would. Come, see where his body was laying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Again, that was Matthew chapter 28, verses 2 through 7. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Brooks Brown. Reverend Gregory Brooks Drumright, we want to welcome you who are visiting with us. For those that are family, welcome back to the house. We are glad to see each and every one of you on this fantastic occasion. We also want to welcome our online visitors who we wish could be here with us in person, but we understand you are not. But we thank you so much for being with us here virtually. All right, now we are going to have our Citadel Litany, and for those who are visiting with us and may not know, our litany is our reason for being here, is us affirming that we truly understand why we're here. I will be the leader and you will be the people, and it reads as such. I have come out today not just to be blessed, but also to be a blessing. I will forget who is with me or beside me, Though I may be tired, I will though I may be weary, I will though I may be hurting, I will though I may be in need, I will though I may be in an unfamiliar place, I will though he slay me, I will, I will think on his goodness, I will think on his kindness. I would think on his mercy and his grace and all together we say, and I will bless the Lord at all times in my dancing, singing, shouting, and rejoicing. This day, his praises shall continually be upon me and in my mouth. And if you believe that to be true, go ahead and put your hands together. For the name of the Lord, he's a mighty good God. He's the God who was, who is, and is to come. And we bless him on this afternoon. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, Psalms 122 and 1 says, and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We're going to take it back to the old school. Is that all right? We're going to take it back to the oily songs. Is that all right? Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, oh come on and lift it up. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord Rejoice and be glad in it and be glad 
experience. Amen. We wanted to just take it back in the beginning for the old school saints. 
Do I have any new school, old school people in here? You know, I'm kind of like in between. I'm not really a, a Gen Xer, and I'm not really a Gen Z. I'm kind of like right in the mid, right in the middle. No, I'm sorry. I'm not really a millennial, uh -huh. and I'm not really a Z. Uh -huh. I'm like right in the middle. Whatever. Hey man, I got the best of both worlds. Yeah. New school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You school. All right. And old school. Uh -huh. Congregation behind us. Yeah. Amen. I want to know who's in the congregation today. I said not the crowd, but the congregation. Y'all remember being in the congregation and you had to sing the whole service. Hold on, choir. Nothing but the blood. Let me hear you say. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Let me hear you, congregation. Nothing but the blood. 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 Hate streaming down. The blood hate streaming down. The blood hate streaming down. Piss them on his side. Piss them on his side. Crown up of thorns. Crown up thorns. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but nothing but the blood of Jesus. I want you to go and tell three people, welcome to the Citadel and welcome to Resurrection Experience. Come on, get out your seat and travel and greet somebody. Yeah. Greet somebody and tell them welcome to the Resurrection Experience. We want to welcome our online church as well. We know we have some people that are watching us from afar. If you can just type in the comments and let us know where you're checking in from. We're so grateful that you would join us today for such an auspicious occasion. Is anybody grateful in the house and online? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am here to tell us and to set the tone for this story that is unfolded. I want to take us to John 15 and 9, and it says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. This story begins with love. Somebody shout love. love. Jesus' agape love. The love that covers a multitude of sins. The love that says, I won't count up wrongdoing. The kind of 
love that comes from a pure and sincere heart. Somebody say love. Love. The kind of love that we all desire to have, but we have to learn to give. We have the greatest example before us, and that name is Jesus. Somebody shout that wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus. In fact, Jesus loved Lazarus. And hearing that Lazarus was sick, Jesus returned back to the place where they threatened to stone him, Judea. His love was greater than any fear that could have consumed him. In fact, in John 11 and 35, it's the shortest verse in the entirety of the Bible, yet it was expressive of Jesus' love for Lazarus. And it says, Jesus wept. This was one of Jesus' final miracles before he would be crucified, to lift up Lazarus. Now many prophets had come before, there was Moses, there was Elijah, there was Elisha, and many others. Yet and still, the stubborn agenda of humanity caused God to have to offer his only son for the remission of our sins. Jesus was frustrated that he had to keep establishing his identity among these disciples. And he even stayed around to help them gain an even greater understanding. My friends, I'm here to tell you today that it was the passion of Christ, the love in Christ's heart, that he would be crucified, that he would be wounded for our transgressions, that he would be bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace, was upon him. Through Christ's blood, we are redeemed. This story begins with love. And John 15 verses 13 through 17 says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Somebody say love. His love goes deep enough to forgive the unforgivable. It's strong enough to hold you up when you are falling down. How do I know? Because I'm standing here to tell you in this moment. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the way. Did I miss my chance? Did I sell it for a temporary thrill? Is it possible for God to get the glory from me still? I gave away pieces of myself to so many other things, so many other I fell like yeah. maybe it's too late for God to use me so I begin to hate myself I started to think that I would never see the day but then he showed me who he is and now I can say How do I know? 
Cause I'm standing here to tell In this moment My voice sounds crazy But that's the way that he loves you Yeah.
deep enough. I said his love is deep enough to hold you, to forgive you when he knows that you might do it again. Let's sing it. His love goes enough and as the one true God one a single unit particular a certain individual Jesus was one of the kind nobody can do his miracle signs and wonders like he does a man of his word that nothing that he said came back to him void but everything that he said came back everything that he said went out and it was finished he was the true gospel some tried to say he was Elijah the prophet some tried to say that he was Jeremiah the prophet some said that he was John the Baptist and others said that he was the other prophets but the question on the floor was who do men say that I am who do men say that I am and one bold disciple Peter said that you are the Christ you are the living God one God he is the true king in Luke 24 when, when after Jesus had died and Mary Magdalene and Mary went to go to the tomb with spices they looked and Jesus was no longer inside of that tomb but they were standing there and marveled and an angel appeared beside them and said why do you look for the living one the living one is not among the dead we don't have to go back to a place of dead things when we should know that our lives is living our God is living he already told us what he was going to do he said that I will be betrayed he said I will be crucified and he said in three days I will be risen again so if they knew the prophecy if they trusted what the one true God said they would have known that he was not in that dead place in Luke 24 19 19 through 24 there were two men who were talking and Jesus was with them and they didn't even know. They said that all these things and Jesus said, why are you having this conversation and why are you saddened? And they asked him, are you a stranger? Did you not hear what was going on with Jesus? How he died and we thought, we thought we had our hopes up in, we had our hopes up. He was the one, the one that was going to deliver Israel, but he did not appear. 
and they were confused by the by Mary they were confused how they could say this but he wasn't there and Jesus rebuked them and said you thick-headed people you slow-hearted people if you will open up your eyes and see I am the one the only one who had to come through glory and so they asked Jesus to come and eat with him he broke bread he blessed and he gave to them and at that moment their eyes were open wide open and they realized it was him and when they realized it he disappeared let us remember who Jesus is he is the one true gospel
because of the gospel. Because of the gospel. Praise Jesus. We praise Jesus. Of the gospel. Is anybody talking about Jesus out there? Jesus. We receive healing. We receive Because of the gospel. Heal us, Jesus. Come to worship him. Because of the gospel. If you worship Jesus, let me see you lift your hands. Let me see some worshipers out there. One more time. We worship. Because of the true gospel. He went all the way to Calvary. And by his stripes, we are healed. We receive healing. We receive healing because of the gospel. Heal us, Jesus. We receive. We receive because of the gospel. You've ever been healed of anything? Why don't you stand on your feet?
In Matthew 28, as we approach the text, we are approaching a shift. The last time Mary and Mary had seen Jesus, he was hanging from a cross. The last time they had seen their friend, their Messiah, their Savior, the last time they had seen their rabbi, he was beaten beyond recognition. And so they have come to anoint his body. But as they approached the place where his body lay, the earth began to shake with violence and the rocks have begun to cry out. The sky has become bright with lightning as the earth responds to the shift happening in the spirit. The last time we had heard from the earth was at Calvary when the veil of the temple was split from the top to the bottom. But now we are hearing from the earth and it is responding to the resurrection of our Savior. And as Mary and Mary are approaching the tomb, as they are approaching the tomb, it is heavily guarded and before it there is a heavy stone some believe that the stone may have weighed three thousand pounds and i imagine that mary said to mary who can move this stone i imagine that they thought what might and what power do we have on our own but before they approach this stone there is an angel he appears and he rolls the stone away that once separated them from his grave. However, he is not there. They must have forgot that day in Galilee when he said, if you tear this body down in three days, it will rise again. in three days his body would rise again he knew that they would do everything they could to destroy him he knew that they would take their best shot at him but what he also knew was that he was going to rise he also had this confidence that you cannot keep me in the ground he also knew that he wasn't dead he was only crucified Stop! Back the stone! Back the stone! 
as dead men.
is set. Mary and the other Mary by his tomb. Yet believing, they could not do what you and I do when we think somebody is dead. They kept weeping. And they wept. Yeah. Because they thought they were without a savior. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. He's not just a healer. But he's a savior. Yeah. I know that you may not have tears in your eyes right now. But if you could put yourself at that tomb, you can imagine the greatest loss that you would ever experience you might find yourself weeping and even though you may not be crying in this moment I just want us to experience that moment can you reach and tell somebody don't cry tell two or three more people don't cry Don't cry. Tell him, wipe your eyes. He's, he's, he's not dead. Let me hear you cry. Anybody ever felt like he wasn't there? Glory, 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 glory. 
text we've come here to celebrate a risen Savior Luke chapter 23 beginning at verse 33 hallelujah And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, where they crucified him. Somebody say, they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. In other words, they cut up his clothes and placed bets. And the people stood beholding and the rulers also with them derided him, which means they mocked him saying he saved others let him save himself if he be Christ the chosen of God and the soldiers also mocked him coming to him and offering him and saying if you be the king of Jews <laughs> save yourself and a superscription was also written over him in Greek and Latin and in Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> he can't even take a deep breath. Look at their king. Oh, he's, he's bleeding. <laughs> oh, he's about to die now. The king is about to die. Where's, where's your Hosanna? Hosanna. Hallelujah. Well, you don't have your fans. You don't have any followers. You're all the way at Calvary. What happened to all of your followers? 
you're here but you're there you're not you're, you're dying you <laughs> what happened to all the people that were saying Hosanna in the heights where are they at now he was a savior who was despised can I tell this story he was a savior who was mocked anybody in here ever been picked on anybody in here ever been ridiculed okay I didn't hear enough amens maybe I'll get you right here anybody in here ever been bullied but have you ever had your clothes ripped off of you and people place bets for them for your tattered and torn clothes to make you look even more helpless the thing that gets me about his story more than anything else besides him taking my sin upon himself the thing that the, the other thing that really really bothers me is that he was a savior with no support and I am not convinced that if he was here right now in the in the 21st century millennium with a war happening in that same holy land and political divide happening to the east and the west of it I am not convinced that he would have any more support in 2024 than he had then don't you understand that the church is waning the pews are no longer being pursued what I'm doing is no longer respected because one in a million makes a mistake what we are doing is no longer popular have you been outside of these four walls and told people you are a Christian did you tell people or invite people to come to church and see their reaction? A savior with no support. But he decided to go all the way. With the cross to Calvary. I said he decided to not stop. Every year, I understand more and more about his gospel. For those of you all who are church workers, for those of you all who have been preachers longer than a few years, I have a few in here. You understand that we get to this resurrection Holy Week experience once a year. And once a year, we have to make meaning of a story that we are familiar with. Once a year. I was talking to a preacher, a preacher who preaches to thousands on many weeks. We were on the phone for about an hour and they were sharing with me, I'm, I gotta do this again, drum right. I said, I know how you feel. And they said, you know, this is like my 10th or 11th year standing in the same pulpit, preaching this same gospel. And I said, you know, I know how you feel. And they said, I'm just trying to figure out and I'm a little perplexed doing it how to make his gospel sound new. But they've heard all of my resurrection sermons. I said, I know how you feel. But you know what else I know? 
even though I've done this every Resurrection Sunday for 21 years. Every year, God gives me a new revelation. Thank you, Lord. He gives me a new revelation. Somebody ought to tell God thank you for keeping it fresh. I know you're standing. I'm only going to be just another minute or two. We're almost done. But I do want to share with you what he explained to me through the spirit, through the portals of glory this week. He helped me to understand in this Holy Week resurrection season, not just this week, but in this season. He said, my son, I did not die. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I, I did not die. I said, but we celebrate your death and then your burial and then your resurrection. And he said, I know. And he said, you celebrate my death because what I did, you all do not have any language or any translation that would bring you into the true revelation of the revival that I had between heaven and hell for two and a half days. He said, you can't explain it because I wasn't here, but I wasn't there. And so because you all haven't, haven't the capacity to understand where I was, it's just best if you translated it as me dying before I rose again. He said, but tell my people this year, they didn't kill me, they crucified me. Oh my God, I said, Lord, I never thought of it like that. And I ran to the text and there it was. And when they were come to the place which is Calvary, where they crucified him. You cannot kill what you did not create. Yes, he came in flesh. But he was different from you and I. He was the word wrapped in flesh. And if this word did not come from man, you can pierce him on his side. And you can put a stake through his heart and his hands. But you cannot kill what you did not create. I wish I had a hallelujah in here. I said, I wish I had a hallelujah in here. He said, fact check me. And I ran back to the gospel. And it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over the earth until the ninth hour and the sun darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst and i don't know if you heard minister brown but that's what she was talking about she was talking about the fact that when this happened even though the people were mocking him the bible teaches us that the earth started responding I'm sorry, it's shut up in here. It's shut up in my bones. We're in Greensboro, North Carolina. And if you check your news feed, a lot of people don't watch the news. A lot of people don't even take in the news. But if you do a fact check on me, if you check your news feed, 
Greensboro, North Carolina, the Piedmont of North Carolina, a state in the Middle Eastern Atlantic coast has been experiencing earthquakes. We just had an earthquake here last week and we had another one the week before that and another one the week before that. I now see a revelation in the text that when the earth responds, it's responding to something that's happening in the spirit. I promise you, when Greensboro starts having earthquakes, he's soon to come. I know he's our savior, but I want you to tell three people real quick, he's our soon coming king. He's our soon coming king. Tell him, tell him, tell him he's coming back. I ran to the text and the text said in verse 46 of Luke chapter 23 that when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands I give you my spirit. And having said thus, he died. He died. That's not what it said. That's not what your Bible said. What does your Bible say? And having said thus, He gave up the ghost. There's this one thing that we do when there's no more ghost left in you. After the songs and before the chicken, we go to the graveyard. Are y'all with me? I promise you my shoes hurt harder than yours. They're narrower than yours, I promise you. But I'm a, can I finish this story? I said after the, after the cries and after the eulogy, but before the fried chicken and the mac and cheese, we go to the graveyard. And at the graveyard, the minister commits the body to the ground. But in the gospel story, I see a different type of committal. I see the first committal, it said in verse 39 that one of the guys that were hanging next to him said, if you be Christ, save yourself and save us. And then the other one rebuked him saying, do you not fear God? Seeing that you are about to die just like him. And if we indeed are justified, then we receive for what we have done, the reward for what we have done. We are thieves. We are about to die. Why would you ridicule somebody else for dying if you are about to die too? And Jesus said unto him, today you shall be with me in paradise. He asked Jesus, will you remember me? And Jesus responded to him, today you will be with me in paradise oh my god (laughs) 
there's three things that happen here. Can I just tell you? Don't, don't you do that now, because I feel it. <laughs> there's three things that happen here. The first committal is that he committed a defense instead of an offense. Somebody say a defense instead of an offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opposite, I've been watching too much basketball. The opposite of offense is defense. That means that when you don't have the upper hand, that you fight not to stay in the lower half. If you are not on offense, then you are playing defense. I seen when Jesus said that they will be with him in paradise, I heard Christ call forth the narrative. When I get to my daddy, after all this has been done, I'm going to tell him that you are not the thieves that they knew you to be. Oh, some of y'all not robbers. That you're not the liar that the world know you to be. Okay, some of y'all not, okay. That you're not the whore that some of us have actually been. Okay, that you are not the doubter Can you look at your neighbor and say he's working on your defense? Does anybody need him like that? If you need him like that, you ought to clap your hands. I gotta let it go. Number two. When he said to them, and he said this in the other gospel texts, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He committed a defense, and then the second committal is that he committed forgiveness. I need to talk about this for like 60 seconds. Forgiveness. You know what we have such a hard time doing? And nobody actually put a real dagger in our back. You know what we struggle with when we know somebody just lied on us, but they did not rip our clothes off of us, put a crown of thorns on our head append us to an old nasty rugged cross and then laugh at us because we didn't get down by ourselves if he could forgive then why can't we forgive i just got a question he taught us forgiveness and the third committal <laughs> he said i will remember you I will put my name on this. I will stand on kingdom business. When I get to heaven, I promise you, after defending you and after forgiving you, I'm still not going to leave you in hell. I will remember you and you and you and you and you and you and you not what you done but what I told you not where you been not how you lived but I'll remember you
I can't preach it no better than this. I don't know whoever ran out of God, ran away from the church, ran away from your upbringing, ran away from the word, ran away from your baptism, ran apart from your christening, ran apart from your confession and lived like you didn't know who Jesus really was. I don't know whoever sung this song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But you didn't love him back. I don't know how many prodigal sons how many prodigal daughters? How many prodigal preachers? How many prodigal Levites? How many prodigal people I have? But you ran away knowing that he loved you. You ran away knowing that he forgave you. You ran amok knowing that he is chasing after you. But you ought to praise him tonight because he didn't forget you. He didn't forget you. He forgave you and remembered you. He forgave you and defended you. He forgave you and talked to his daddy. decided to do it I said he decided to do it I said he decided to do it he didn't need convincing it was his choice I wish you would turn around and tell somebody behind you he decided to save you he decided to remember you tell him he's gonna defend you and you won't have to pay any bills for that defense tell him his blood already paid the price I'm done. Peter, I'm done. We got two more short songs. We're going to receive communion and then we're going <laughs> to. But check this out. Oh, oh, oh. Hold it, hold it. Just. Just hold your mule. If y'all help me out just a little bit here. <laughs> now we get ready to sing this song, He Decided to Die. But the only reason why I'm using that language is because that's all we got. He didn't die. No, he didn't. He was crucified. I said he didn't die. But that's the only way we can explain. If he made the choice not to save himself, and after that choice, he died, then that would mean that he committed suicide. Let me, can I say that again? If he made the choice to hang there until he died 
and after that he in fact did die then that would make his choice death which means that he would have committed suicide but I come to tell you he didn't commit suicide he just committed himself come down from the cross to save himself he decided to die to save you and me
he decided. See, you didn't heard it 20 times and now it don't mean as much. But can you decide to bless him? Because he decided to save you. Help me out here. Oh. My soul rejoices. Because now we've reached Sunday. The first day of the week. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says they went to the tomb. Mary and Mary went to redress his body. If you was with me in Bible study, you might get excited about this because he started stinking. And we don't want what's not dead to start stinking. And the Bible says that they came with spices and linens to wrap his body. But when they got there, the stone had rolled away. And it revealed an empty grave. Can I get you to put this in the atmosphere? He's not dead. He's still alive. He's not dead. And he's not there. Why seek you the living among the dead? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are we praising? Because we serve a risen, a resurrected. Savior. He was not killed. He was crucified. I wish I had a clapping church. Clap like he deserves that clap. Clap like you come to celebrate the risen, the risen Savior. Praise him. 
Resurrection Church for about 60 seconds. I need a church that come to celebrate. He got up. 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 Yes, he did.
love that gives me strength from day to day it will never ever lose his power There be another. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day. If I be your man of God, may I serve you? It will never ever lose. upper room and after he was resurrected he reappeared to the disciples and in one of the gospels it said that when they seen him they did not recognize him but he walked with them and he talked with them and when they reached their destination still not realizing that who they thought was dead had been resurrected who they thought was just a mere man that was actually the Messiah they sat down and had a meal are you all following me after he was risen The text says that he sat down and had a meal and they still did not realize talking about him that it was him. And he listened to all of their doubt. And he listened to all of the gossip and he listened to all that was being told about who they thought was dead. And the Bible says he took the bread and he took the cup and he broke bread with them. And the Bible says that it was in that exact moment that they realized, oh my God, it is Jesus. Nobody broke bread with us like this before. And the text says he vanished. He said to his disciples, this is my body, which is broken for your sakes eat of my body and they ate oh glory hallelujah y'all know it's okay to holler
and he took the cup. For my body is the bread of life. And with my blood, I established a new covenant with you. It will no longer be an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. But it is my pleasure to establish my blood beside your name for me to commit myself in your stead. And with this cup, when off, as often as you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you do so in remembrance of me until I come again. Somebody say, Lord, I remember you. The bread of life and the cup of peace. y'all would sing like you got a voice. for the blood glory to God and glory to God in the highest I want to receive the Lord's offering yes. hallelujah I want to receive the Lord's offering and we will bless the food and give a benediction and I hope that you will stay I don't want you to go to anybody's restaurant and have to pay for a meal. We have provided one for you. I want to receive the Lord's offering and I ask, let me make this appeal. And we don't make appeals often. I want to make this appeal that you will bring a resurrection seed offering. I want to ask everyone that loves God. The Bible says where your heart is, there is also your, your treasure. And so often do we show God where our heart really is. It's unfortunate that our heart might actually be on our feet. Our heart might actually be in the driveway. Our heart may actually be on our backs. Oh gosh, maybe 15 years ago in the existence of our ministry, I stopped our church from coming to church on Resurrection Sunday, what the world calls Easter, from wearing anything new. I'll be the first to admit I grew up, I grew up thinking I had to have a new outfit for Easter Sunday. And the Lord, you remember every year he gives me a new revelation. Yeah. The Lord that year shared with me, Pastor Conley, why do you all observe what is fashion in a head and in place of faith? And he said, my people go to great extents to look good and don't go to that same extent to live good and to make good sacrifices. And the Lord said, 
we actually have been sowing into Easter stores and not resurrection ministries. And so what happens on a weekend like this is that we go out and we buy new shoes, new suits, new clothes, and big hats. And we come to church with $5. And we say, Lord, take this. And then we go out to the restaurant and we spend $20. $30. If you eat like me, I know you can tell. $40. So who has our heart? Where is our heart? And so it was that year and every year since I asked the church, I asked the church, don't wear anything new on Resurrection Sunday and don't go out to eat. We will figure out how to feed you. Will you all take what you would normally put in an outfit and what you would normally pay at a restaurant and will you make a sacrifice so that we can get out of this Marriott and get on with ministry will you make a sacrifice will you make a sacrifice my sacrificial offering is a sacrifice today if, it's, if $20 is not a sacrifice, will you make a sacrifice? I once was preaching down in Florida and I called for a $100 offering sacrifice. It was a church that had just started. They told me they couldn't pay me enough money to come and preach and they asked would I, would, would I come anyway? And I said, sure. And they said, we will help you get home. They sent for me and they made sure I got home. And so what I did, it was my first year of ministry too. It was, this was in 2003. I had enough money in my pocket because I had a new ministry that was a little ahead of theirs. I went down there with my seed offering in my pocket. And this is the thing, Haywood. People talk about preachers like we're dogs. And they talk about us like we're pimps but nobody talks about the preachers and the pastors that give their way out of poverty. And I gave my way out of the... I gave my way out of the projects. And when I got to college, I went back to the projects. And I gave my way out of that. And then I lost everything. And when I was trying to get it back, I was trying to save to pay my bills. And the Lord told me, if it don't meet your need, it's a seed. And I said, God, I'm trying to catch up on my rent. How are you actually asking me? I'm visiting the church. You telling me to give that kind of money? I got a church and I can't even afford that when I'm in my, God said, if it don't meet your deed. And I remember I was $200 from having my rent money and God said, if it don't meet your deed, <laughs> it's a seed. And I gave it. And you know what God did? God sent a blessing yes. that I did not even know about. Yes, I have a nice car outside. Yes, when I leave this place, I'm not going back to the same hood that I grew up in. Yes, I have a house on a golf course. And yes, I have shoes. And yes, I have clothes. But you want to know where the real yes is? For the first 15 years of this ministry, this church could not pay me a salary. When we started the campus ministry 12 years ago, she did the finances. 
and we would have 200 people in worship. But because 99% of them were college students, the offering was, remember that Sunday, $99. That I funded this ministry and lost everything behind this ministry for over a decade, only to feel like I got to start all over. When I should be building, God sent me broke college students. And God said, you better not complain. I will do it through you, but you got to want me to do it. Yeah. Nobody talks about the pastors that have given everything to see the work of God become something. But I will talk about the goodness of God. Yeah. I remember in our first year, our power bill at our first building was $800. My mama. I don't even know if she remembers it because she never talks about it. My mama reached in her, her pocketbook and wrote a check because the church could not afford it. I was paying the lease $1,300 and she was paying the power bill. Do you think I care if people talk about us now? We did it until we didn't have to do it. Oh. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said we did it until we didn't have to do it. And now we don't have to do it. Because there are some people that are standing with us that have the same heart for ministry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so for the last two or three years, I've been writing big checks to millionaires. These are not any millionaires. These are people who are doing God's work. I remember back in 2020, Creflo Dollar was making news. He almost died in the middle of a flight. He wasn't flying to Dubai for a vacation. He was flying to the Middle East for a revival. And people talk about people like him, like dogs. But if you got his itinerary that year, Already in that year, he had already made over a hundred gospel mission trips. He wasn't flying to a developed country. He was flying to a third world country to do the work of the Lord. And in the middle of his flight, one of his engines died. They didn't write this in the headlines. He and his whole ministry team almost died. Jesus. They made it safe and he made it back home on a different plane. And he went to his church that Sunday and he went to the people that support his ministry. And he said, will you all help me? I need a new jet. And he put up the statistics, how many thousands of flights that his jet had made for ministry. And he said, and this was in 2020, watch this. His jet was a model 1986. They didn't write that in the headlines. The only thing they put on Instagram was millionaire pastor ask people for money to buy a new jet. While everybody was talking about him like a dog, I took out my checkbook and I sold into his ministry because I've been there. I've been to College Park, Georgia. I've walked around that campus. 
And the most amazing thing about that dome that seats nearly 10,000 people is that the church they came from, like they literally came from that church and marched to the new church was about the size of this right here. And they had to have six services a Sunday. And you're telling me he started his church in his house. Watch this. The most amazing thing is when they walked across that parking lot to their new 8,000 something seater, they had already paid it off debt free. Why would you send Creflo Dollar any money, Pastor? Because you all got to learn where to sow. You don't let gossip teach you something about somebody that you don't know anything about. Good soil. Good soil. I said I sow into good soil. I've been giving to my bishop. And I'm happy to talk about this. I don't care if people talk about me because I'm talking about him. Bishop T.D. Jakes. I don't care. I don't care. People can run it down. And you know what's crazy for all of you all who's sharing that news and talking about it across your tables and, you know, in your feeds and stuff. Isn't that something? All of that breaking news. And in 2024, in 2023 and in 2024, we still ain't seen a picture. We still ain't got no video. We still ain't even heard no audio. So we will run behind rumors. Like rumors haven't been told about you and me. Why would you sow into a man that already has money? I'm so happy you asked. I'm so happy you asked. You don't sow because someone is poor. You don't sow because something is poor. You sow because it's fertile soil. You put seed in good ground. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm gonna say it again. You put seed in good ground. If you were gonna sow into something that was poor, you would just sow your seed in clay. Or you would sow your seed in rocks. Or watch this, you would sow your seed in sand. Has anybody ever been to the beach and seen a garden in the middle of the sand? You sow because something is good ground. I'm not sowing to him. I'm sowing to the work that has saved millions of people, including me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let me teach you how to sow. You don't sow down, you sow up. The Bible says, in good soil, in good ground, I want to ask you, sow into our church. If you believe that the citadel is meeting the needs of the people of God in the 21st century, sow into our church. I have not spent this much time on an offering in three years. How much time do I spend raising an offering every, every week? It don't even go into a whole minute. I ask you to give. I ask you to give. But I need you to understand, we're sowing today. We're sowing today. We're sowing today. So, in that revival in Florida, that brand new church, they were having church inside of a broke down gym. I said, 
I had did a three night revival. The first night is about 25 people there. The second night it was 150 people there. The third night it was over 300 people there. And they said, Prophet, can you stay till Saturday? Everything you said has already started to come to pass. People started coming to the church with miracles in the middle of the revival. And I said, well, I'll stay to Saturday. I did Saturday and they said, can you say, stay Sunday? And then this pastor wants you to come and do his revival from Monday through Wednesday. And another, I said, uh-uh, I got to go to the Citadel. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't care because revival is breaking out somewhere. I started a work and I came home and preached to my people. And I said, if y'all want me to come back, you gotta bring me back. The last day, it was a, a noonday service on Saturday. I said, I want you to sow a seed. I said, I'm not gonna tell you what to give. I said, if you need a suggestion, I'm giving $100. I said, I want you to make a sacrifice, sow a seed. We raised the offering, in the middle of the offering, a lady came to me and said, if $100 is not a sacrifice, do I have to give 100? I said, no, you give a sacrifice. She said, okay. The service was over and they came to me in the office. I was ready to go. And they said, pastor, there's a check written in your name. I said, okay, it's a big deal. I mean, y'all thought we wouldn't even gonna raise no money. I came with seed money in my hand and, and now you have enough money to get this church started. And they said, the check is from that lady that asked wow. if she could give a sacrifice and not a hundred. Wow. And I said, okay. And they said, but the check is for $10,000. Wow. It's a true story. It's a true story. I said, what? They said the check is for $10,000. And she wrote it in your name. And I said, well, let's do this. I said, I'm gonna sew back. Pastor, you keep five and I'll keep five. Because I want your church to live. I had prophesied to her that she was going to be wedded and I prophesied to her that she was going to have children. I didn't know who she was. I didn't know that she had been through trauma and I didn't know that her tubes were tied. I got back home and within a year she got married. And she said, will you go to a Western Union? I just want to send you another offering. <laughs> so check this out. Warren, I went to the Western Union down Market Street past that food line that we call something else lying. I ain't going to say it, but we in the hood now. And there was a great stops right beside the food line in the family dollar. You know what I'm talking about? I didn't even, I had never been to a Western Union before. So I went to the Western Union and all she did was like, give me this transaction number. So I went up in the great stops at the Western Union and I gave them the number and I know I walked around the store. I said, what they want me to do? Buy something here? Like, this is taking too long. So I went to the counter after about 15 minutes and I said, what's going on? And they said, you tell us. <laughs> and I said, what you mean? They was like, why would you come in here with this transaction? I said, what you mean? They said, bro, we don't give nobody $5,000 from, from out of our safe. We got to find the money to pay your Western Union. She sent me the $5,000. 
I told this story, but I never told the whole story. She sent it back. And guess what? She put a note. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, I'm pregnant, and you know that church that was in the gym when I went, y'all they booming now, it's big and it's bad, it's called the champion church, hallelujah, so when I was down at T.D. Jake's, I'm sitting in the back of the room. I sat in the back of the room the whole conference. They kept telling me, Pastor, come to the front. I said, no, sit in the back. I said, y'all know I don't sit in the back of nowhere. I sat in the back the whole time. For three days, I sat in the back. On the third day, a man came to me. He was flipping out. I thought he was cuckoo. Oh, my God. 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 What's up, bro? God bless you, bro. I mean, he was well put together. So I didn't understand what's going on. He said, are you drunk, right? He said, oh, my God, I heard somebody say your name. And I said, that's him. And I said, yeah, bro. And this was, I said, maybe I met him at a march or something. He seen me on TV or something. He seen me get thrown in the jail or something. You know, all that stuff that people respect you for. And he said, tears welled up in his eyes. And he said, you prophesied to me over 20 years ago. He said, you stopped the whole revival and you prophesied to me. And he said, you told me stuff that I went home and was mad about because I said, I can't believe it and I don't want to do it. He said, I'm not trying to take your time. I'm just trying to get your cash out. I said, what you mean? He said, everything you told me came to pass. said you told me stuff that only you knew and that made me mad everything you told me came to pass I was on Instagram the other day trying to do my live and people was coming on to the live saying you prophesied to me over 10 years ago and everything you told me it's come to pass. I'm there at TD Jakes writing big churches and people sending me big cash apps and I'm sitting on the back row of the church Are you ready to sow? Are you ready to sow? Are you ready to sow? I'm not going to take this much time again in a long time. I just want to know, do I have a sowing church today? This is my resurrection seed. Everybody say, this is my resurrection seed. I sow it. Believing that it will meet every one of my needs. I sow it in good faith and in good measure. This is my resurrection seed. I sow it believing that it will be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I sow this today believing that the harvest that comes from this will give me an even bigger seed to sow tomorrow. I believe that I'm reaping the harvest. I believe that I'm sowing the seed. I believe I'm expecting abundance to intercede in Jesus name, amen. Let's thank God for having seed to sow. If you don't have nothing, this will be the last time you have nothing to sow. Praise him. Praise him. I want to bless the food when we when we give our benediction there are tables do we have tables tables are coming out and we, we, all you gotta do is just put your chair around the table the food is ready the food is hot the drink is sweet the water is watering the chicken ain't got no blood in it do it the devil is retarded amen he decided to die not me Amen. 
we don't we want you to eat with us and um, do, do I have announcements who's, who's birthday thank you so much okay this okay oh, Breeden's birthday is this week and you having a party tell us when you uh, don't tell us if we're not coming we invited I, I did that publicly like for real are we invited because you know some saints don't invite us amen amen Yes, I am. Um, it is my 30th birthday. <laughs> and yes, the church is invited. It is at 5 p.m. on this Saturday coming up, and it will be right here on the patio. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, and the attire for you all is all black. So, like cocktail attire, yeah. Slim and trim. Okay, saved and sassy. All my saved and sassy people show up to the party looking good. Next Saturday at five o'clock. I hope I hope I don't get no call for no revival. Amen. <laughs> now I'm just playing. I ain't gonna do you like that. Amen. So I have a big announcement. You ready? Yeah. Women's Day is the fourth <laughs> Sunday. A month from today. And our guest speaker will be none other than Pastor Sandra Riley. All the way from Chicago, Illinois. Y'all get ready, get ready, get ready. We, if you don't know who Riley is by now, just Google. Amen, amen. She is a world-renowned preacher um, so women's day is the fourth Sunday listen next Sunday we would normally wear all white next Sunday I want you to do you so you know how everybody else is in their Easter best today okay we're gonna do that next Sunday period okay so come in your pinks your lilacs your yellows your purples your baby blues just act like You've been blessed next Sunday. Did y'all hear what I said? I said, just act like you've been blessed next Sunday. Amen. And some of y'all ain't got nothing, but somebody gonna bless you with something. Amen. Don't you worry about it. Is that okay? Now, tomorrow, if, if you decided not to fast this week, that wasn't mandatory, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're gonna go on our first of the month fast. Y'all got me? And then on April the 8th, Monday, April 8th, we have a joint meeting, and that's our fish fry meeting. Amen? Thank God for the announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Everybody standing. We're going to receive the offering, and we're going to give you the benediction. Listen, I'm sorry that, glory to God, we took so long, but didn't my choir sound so good? I said, didn't my choir, did they sound all right? Amen. Thank God for these musicians. Amen. Choir, come on, give your offering, and we're going to sing that one last benediction song. Everybody say, I'm reaping the harvest. I'm sowing the seed. Come on, choir. I'm expecting abundance to intercede. Everybody lift all your hands. God, I thank you right now, and I ask that you would bless us and keep us. I ask that you would cover us. I ask that you would keep harm, hurt, harm, and danger from us. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceeding joy. Say it with me, church. To the only wise God be glory, honor, dominion, and power both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we pray that you will bless this food and let it be for the nourishment of our body. Bless the fellowship as we receive it in good measure. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're under the direction of the ushers, ministers first. Glory to God. Amen. Grab the tables, roll them out. We're going to sing you into 